at this moment. We still have a few more minutes, but we want to let you know that um, 11.30 to 11.45 a.m. is usually our normal time to come on the air. And sometimes we come on in the evening um, at between 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening sometimes. <laughs> but I want to follow up the conversation with something. I want to play a, a clip that we played on a previous show for you audiences to understand what what we were talking about when we were saying when we were talking about the situation with America and how she's stoking tensions around the world and how um, it is absolutely uh, a lunatic policy an insane policy for her to be stoking tensions with China. And just just look just listen to what the, this, these people have to say about the decline of America and her dollar. And this was recorded last year, but I want to play it for you again. We, we showed it on a previous show this year. Um, as a matter of fact, last week, but I want to, you to just see what the world is saying about America's policies, her finances, and the madness in, in, uh, and how she does things. So pay close attention. Dr. Francisco, uh, just before the break, Clive made the point that you're trusting the medium rather than the person. Uh, when it comes to the United States, I don't trust the person or the medium. Uh, I'd be happy if I never... Uh, uh, bought another American thing or saw another American dollar uh, because I don't like bullies. Isn't this partly the end of the era of the bully? I think multipolarity is here. I think that's the key. And the dollar is dying. There is no question about it. Let me give you some figures that are quite important. The GDP of the United States is $24 trillion. The debt, the public debt is $30 trillion. The difference between the total uh, gross domestic product and the debt is six trillion. Six trillion is equivalent to the combined GDPs of the whole of the Latin American countries together, including Brazil. That gives you an idea of the problem. That's number one. There is a US debt clock, which you can find in the internet. I ran it before coming to the show. And I ran it for five minutes. And in that, those five minutes, the amount of debt that increased in the United States was eight billion. <laughs> now, eight billion is, if you have three of them, that is the GDP of Nicaragua. If you have five of them, that's the GDP of Bolivia. The United States has a very serious problem with infrastructure. Their productivity is low. The number of um, bridges in the United States that require urgent repair no repair, urgent repair, is 65,000. The, the quality of the road, according to the um, American Society of Civil Engineers, they produce a report every year, 42% of the roads are mediocre or in need of repair. The electricity plants, um, airports, and so on, everything is a complete mess. The United States doesn't have high-speed trains. It doesn't. Sorry to say like this, even Spain has them. So that gives you an idea of the problem. And the United States economy is growing at a rate of something between 2 and 1%. The Chinese economy, with all the problems, is growing at a rate of 7%. So that means in the next 10 years, arithmetically, the, the US economy is going to be 20% bigger and the Chinese economy is going to be 70% bigger. Now, if you take what countries have done regarding this question of the dollar, Possibly people do not know, but China and Japan are conducting their foreign trade in their currencies. Um, Iran is conducting their business in no dollar. Russia and China, Iraq, and many other countries. But the recent decision by the um, Saudi Arabia to actually conduct the selling of their oil to China in yuan. Now, China buys 25% of the total output of Saudi Arabia. This is 30 billion. The United States purchases only 7%. So if you keep going down, you can see that there is already a multipolarity of, in of initiatives. What we don't have is the international architecture, financially speaking, so that there is a system which is coherent, is international, it works, it has uh, legal security that gives you legal confidence that if you enter into and transaction in that system, you know, whatever it is, you, is going to be respected. That has to happen, but it's beginning to take place already. So the United States is, is in a real, real trouble, and it doesn't have any possibility. I just looked at the budget, 
that Joe Biden presented to Congress for 2023. It's a very long document. It has three, three key components. Number one, domestic security is going to give to the police it domestically huge amount of resources. The organization Black Lives Matter said, this is not what we want. You know what happened when they have resources. And basically, Biden is trying to get votes from the right by doing this. That's number one. Number two is international security. He increased the budget, the military budget, to 773 billion, which is 30 billion more than in the previous administration. And surprisingly, he's going to apply a tax of 20% on the fortunes of 100 million upwards, which is going to produce 360 billion. And it's going to reduce the budget deficit and the deficit of the United States by 1 trillion in 10 years. So it's, going, it's totally useless. And in order for this budget to be passed, he needs to win it in the House, in Congress. He, he's got a majority. Control over which he may well lose in November. Certainly, but at the moment, if we were to, produce, to propose it, he would pass it in the House, but he would not be able to pass it through Congress because there is 50-50. And Democrat right wing Joe Manchin already said he's not going to support it. So it's already not only is useless, as a proposal to recover the economy, but it's already dead before it begins. So that gives you an idea of the problems that they have. So the issue, strategically, from their point of view, is this. Do they continue waging war against everybody else? And who else is there to wage war? The calculation, it seems to me, was if we are able to bully Russia and make them accept our way, and then later on we'll continue with that until, you know, we produce something equivalent to regime change, isolating China thereby, and therefore the next move is to attack China. And this one hasn't worked. The, other, the next one is certainly not going to work. So the United States is desperate because he's facing a very serious challenge. Number one, energy and resources from Russia to Europe, which really needs them, and the Belt and Road Initiative by China, which is at the moment is in the region of $5 trillion. So therefore, facing with this huge, very attractive embrace from these two nations that have huge resources, one national resources, the other one, technology, markets, money, and credit, and investment, infrastructure, is very difficult to say no. So the only possibility for them is war, war, war. So in this, um, we see that he said that this economic situation that America now finds herself in makes her desperate. She's desperate. This is why she's doing what she's doing. So for us to understand the magnitude of what is being told to us, we have to understand the definition. We, we need to understand the meaning of words so that we can get a good grasp on what is actually taking place. So according to this guy, he was talking about the 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 and dangling of the books by by Joe Biden and the administration and, and the the terrible situation that America now finds itself in. He didn't just talk about the bridges and the infrastructure that needed repair. He was talking about the ones that needed uh, repair desperately or that needed right now. And he said there was over sixty five thousand bridges, sixty five thousand. Now think about the hundred billion plus that was given to Ukraine and what that could have done for the infrastructure of America. But he, he, at the end, he says, so America is desperate. According to Google's dic dictionary, the word desperate means feeling, showing, or in involving a hopeless sense that a situation is so bad as to be impossible to deal with. Despairing, hopeless, anguish, distress, suicidal. So now that we understand the, the meaning and what he was trying to convey, we can now see that America, irrational policies uh, are insane and suicidal. So some people say, well, why would she do this when she knows that the ramification is this over here or the blowback is that over there? Like we were talking to Scott Ritter and we asked him about, well, you know, if, if they went to war with China, this would happen economically. It would have a domino effect of defaults, unemployment and closing down uh, the closing down of uh, businesses, banks, trucking companies, and all of the supply line. But you have to understand that in an irrational mind, 
what America is doing is rational because she's become desperate because the system no longer caters to American uh, hegemony and Amer American dominance. This is the, one of the mainstays. So this guy, uh, I want you to hear what someone says about what's happening to the global economy. This is about a minute. So just be patient with us, okay? Here we are right here. I find it quite insulting for the EU and the US to say the Russians are breaking the contract by demanding rubles when sanctions, in a sense, are breaking a contract. The policy is entirely the fault of Washington and the European Union. They refuse to negotiate with the Russians on Putin's uh, reasonable security demands. And then they loaded up sanctions and, and literally are running an economic warfare operation against Russia. So what Putin did was a, a very simple and straightforward measure. He said, if you want our, you have to pay in rubles. Now, it's not so difficult for European governments or companies to go to the Moscow bank, the Gazprom bank, for example, and buy rubles. They're just trying to punish Russia. And this is why I've been saying it's economic warfare against Russia, which is the intent of the whole situation of NATO pouring arms into Ukraine to use Ukraine as a weapon against Russia. And the issue here is that the Russians are working on new agreements with China. Uh, they're working on new agreements with India, a ruble for rupee trade uh, arrangement. Uh, we're moving into a whole new economic universe. And the West is terrified about it. The Anglo-Americans won't accept it. And that's why they're trying to uh, degrade and, and destroy the Russian economy. Do you understand? He's, he's talking about the world is moving on from that. And this is what has the Western world led by America terrified, right? Which is similar to what we were just talking about when we go back to the word desperate. Feeling, showing, or involving a hopeless sense that a situation is so bad as to be impossible to deal with. Despairing, hopeless, anguished, distressed, suicidal. And it also says this, last ditch, last chance, last resort, last minute, last gasp. So that's what it's saying right here. And when we look at this, right? And we're getting some, some feedback. So hold on one second. Let me get this out of the way. All right. We got this out. Okay. We'll bring Rashid back in. I see him back in the booth. But they're always playing with our um, connections, but we have excellent connections. But when we look at this, this is not one and done. You hear them talking about India and how America is trying to put pressure on India to, to do away with ties with Russia. You hear them how they're trying to divide China and Russia. They're trying to divide India and China. They're trying to keep these powers away. They, they want constant sanctions of Venezuela. And at the same time, they want you to look at them as the leaders of the world, even while they are constantly um, at loggerheads with Iran. Now, all of these are different sides of the same coin, and it is causing the world to move away from the dollar, right? As a matter of fact, I should play something that will go back. Matter of fact, I am going to play this a minute and 21 seconds. It goes back to the Iranian situation. And remember that China and Russia were two of the guarantors of the JCPOA. Remember that, right? And remember that this was supposed to remove all sanctions on Iran and bring her into the fold of the international community economically so that she can do trade and that she can um, be able to uh, uh, fund uh, certain projects with internet, international uh, bond buyers coming in, buying bonds to fund these things. But America reneged on this. And this alienated who? Russia and China. And it's leading us to the situation where we are right now with nations walking away from the dollar. But John Kerry had some words of wisdom back then. And I'll share them with you. And you'll see how they're interconnected with what is going on right now with the decline of the dollar, the rejection of the dollar, and the world moving outside of the SWIFT system, and the world moving outside 
of the dollar dominated system. Just pay close attention to this. A minute and 21 seconds. Are you kidding me? The United States is going to start sanctioning our allies and their banks and their businesses because we walked away from a deal and we're going to force them to do what we want them to do even though they agreed to the deal we came to? Are you kidding? That is a recipe quickly, my friends, for them to walk away from Ukraine where they are already very dicey and ready to say, well, we've done our bit. They were ready, in many cases, to say, well, we're the ones paying the price for your sanctions. We, we, it was Obama who went out and actually put together a sanctions regime that had an impact. By pers I went to China. We persuaded China, don't buy more oil. We persuaded India and other countries to step back. Can you imagine trying to sanction them after persuading them to in put in face sanctions to bring Iran to the negotiating table? And when they have not only come to the table, but they made a deal, we turn around and nix the deal and then tell them you're going to have to obey our rules on the sanctions anyway. That is a recipe very quickly, my friends, business people here, for the American dollar to cease to be the reserve currency of the world, which is already bubbling out there. And so it was already bubbling out there. And now you see exactly what he warned about at that um, that lecture or that interview or that uh, get together. Now you're seeing the ramifications of what John Kerry has said. What say you on the matter, Rashid? Well, you, you see what's happening now. Without the reserve currency, America has no money. This is what people can't understand. Money, not money unless it has something of tangible value. America didn't put out so much money all over the globe that it, like I keep saying, it's monopoly money. And all it takes is the rest of the world to say, I don't want it anymore because they can never get paid back. You see China sending these thousands and thousands of ships over here to America. They're never gonna get paid for it. So a light bulb is gonna is coming on on the rest of the world saying, Well, why should I, I give them, you know, let them dictate to me when hell ain't giving me nothing in return? And that's what's taking place. The rest of the world, a light bulb is coming on, and you know, it's finally click. Why should you be the ruler of me? Why should I take your worthless dollars when uh, at least Iran and the rest of the people, they're going to pay me something in tangible value. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. That's what John Kerry was. See, the, the average Joe, he runs around and look at the dollar bill. It's worth something. But to the rest of the world, it's worth nothing. And they're finally realizing that. I don't want nothing. To, I, it's like me going printing up a bunch of dollars with me and your face on it. And running around <laughs> passing to this currency. <laughs> After what? I don't want that. I, you can't sell me anything. I mean, uh, 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 with your, with your, with your, uh, printed up with your face on. Mm -hmm. And this is what the people don't want to understand. They think that he, he's, he's, he's a, a, a rock of Gibraltar, but he got feet of clay. He's quicksand. That's basically what it is. <laughs> to get up to the American dollar. It's like you're going to sink down, and there's no bottom. You just keep sinking and sinking and sinking. And that's what's taking place. Uh, and, and, that's, and, that's the, and that's the drive to war. You have an irrational, unhinged, former global hegemon that is losing out. Uh, uh, as long as they had the advantage in trade and competition and, and, and having a reserve currency and being able to dictate, everything was fine. Each lever that was removed, I was reading an article and, and it and it um really made me smile because it, it mimicked what I said and it came off of Sputnik. And as a matter of fact, it says this, and we're gonna close out in just a second. Um, let's see if it's still on the page, on the Sputnik page. Okay, here it is right here. And it made me smile because I often say this, I say it constantly. Um, and it says the PRC challenging US across almost every I mean, all domains, but war avoidable if America doesn't poke the dragon. 
I have been saying it for years on years that this Chinese man was going to chase down because I was I was given it by somebody in the know who who could see down the wheel of time further than we could. And he said he told it to us that this Chinese man was going to chase down this American in every field and every area that he once dominated in. And now an article comes out saying the exact same thing. And this, the West can't handle because it's not a Western nation. It's not, it's, and, and let's be clear, it's not a white nation. And, and we're not talking, at this moment, we're not talking about that, but we're going to bring this up because sometimes hard facts are hard to swallow. And they didn't even, believe it or not, for those of you who are not um, familiar with this, China was not even supposed to be a United Nations Security Council member. It was supposed to be an all-white, all-Christian um, organization. That That is the truth, and you can look this up. But um, they didn't know that, uh, they, they thought that it was going to get their guy, Shanghai Check, into power, but they didn't know that uh, Mao Zedong and his guys were going to uproot Shanghai Check and push them off the mainland. And, and China just so happened to get this seat of power through uh, these events that took place. But again, America is becoming more and more unhinged. Think, I want, before we go off there, I just want you to just sit down for a minute. Calm your nerves and just think about this. Who in their right mind at a time when there's growing unemployment, bankruptcies left and right, you see all of these tech companies and all of these so-called big job providers from all of the social media platforms to Walmart to the other places that are laying off or, or, hire, or firing people. On top of that, you see an explosion of homelessness. You see the job market, I mean, the housing market starting to go south. America's debt, the private and public debt is continuing to mount, right? And the dollar is being rejected. No manufacturing capacity. Uh, the stores are having empty shelves. All of this is taking place. And she needs to borrow from the, the very people that she continues to antagonize and provoke the war. You tell me if that's solid thinking or is that is that thought coming from a mind of a berserker, a person who is hell bent on war and bloodlust. You tell me because that is not rational thinking to try to wage war with the very people you need to buy your debt, to keep your nation afloat. Go ahead, Rashid. I was I was thinking about it with Scott. Uh, next time I'll bring it up. But China's military capacity to produce war materials unrivaled. China can build seven destroyers at once. America takes years to produce one destroyer. Then when it goes out in the sea within about two or three months, it's got to be towed back into port. And when China stuff is, is set out, Everything is working, but yet and still you want to go to war with somebody that that can outproduce you, like 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 Scott was saying, Russia is is, is killing uh, 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 NATO with the with the producing of arms and stuff. Put China and add They're ten times level. of that on there. They're on another level. They're on They're another level, level of China, but yet and still you want to go and go to war with these people. You're stoking it. You're pushing it. You're constantly doing it, all on television and in his in his speech and everybody hollering about uh, what we gonna do and I'm gonna do it and I, you don't do nothing but get beat badly. <laughs> well, listen, we'll be we'll be airing a live uh, show tomorrow at eleven some. Um, uh, even if it's a pre-recorded, we don't know if we're going to pre-record it tonight, but we're going to have a live, we're thinking it live tomorrow morning um, at 11.45. We want you all to join us. Check us out on all the social platforms. We're, we're now on Rumble, we're on Odyssey, we're on uh, Twitch, we're on Twitter, and we're on Patreon. You can go to Patreon, sign up for the latest breaking news, and we're, and we're going to start dropping more content this weekend, uh, video and audio content on the Patreon platform, patreon.com slash the Red Pill Diaries. Support us. Go over to our Locals channel. It's the empowermentoftruth.locals.com and join the Red Pill 
uh, diaries, communities where you can talk, you can um, give your opinion, you can publish articles and all of that. We thank you for joining us. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, we thank Scott for joining us. Rashid, what do you have to say before we go off there? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> same well, channel. Well, as always, we go out the same way we came in with love in our heart for you, but always remember that the love we have for you compel, uh, uh, pales in comparison to the love that our God has for you. And always remember this, stay righteous above all things because there's so much out there and you're going to need to be righteous to persevere and go through these things. Do not be tempted by what you see. The short-lived the short -lived, um, gratification, try to be right, get yourself right because hell is coming with the collapse of the American economy. Mama, always know this, your baby boy loves you more than life. We're out of here. Dude.